Welcome friends, um, to those who are watching the uh, channel for the first time, I'm Salah Abbas, I'm Associate Professor of Surgery at Duke University in Victoria, in, uh, Australia, and I've been teaching uh, medical students for uh, decades. This uh, um, channel is dedicated to uh, the level of medical uh, students. And today I chose to talk to you about another adrenal uh, problem that is uh, relatively a common surgical uh, issue which is uh, what is called Kuhn's uh, syndrome or hyperaldosteronism, primary hyperaldosteronism. Uh, this problem was discovered by a physician in Michigan in 1954 by the name of Jerome Kuhn and since then the uh, name of the, uh, his name got coined onto that syndrome. So we're going to, usually it's an adenoma in one of the adrenal gland that's quite excessive aldosterone, uh, which will lead to hypertension and hypokalemia. And that's how the uh, problem gets suspected and diagnosed. Now, if we have hyperaldosteronism uh, on its own in the uh, on a blood uh, test, and we found that we have got high level of uh, uh, aldosterone in the uh, plasma, uh, that could be caused either by a secreting adrenal adenoma, a functioning adenoma, like the adenomas that are non-functioning. Some of them are functioning, and these are in the adrenal uh, cortex, and they are relatively common. And they secrete aldosterone, and as a result of that, um, the patient will have uh, hyperkalemia uh, and high blood pressure. Rarely this uh, uh, trouble could result from bilateral adrenal uh, hyperplasia, and that's more uh, difficult to treat than a single uh, adenoma. Uh, but it's rare, and that's not the topic uh, uh, of uh, today, so we will only mention it uh, and don't take it any further. There is also a syndrome of inappropriate uh, hyperaldosteronism, and that happens in people who are chronically dehydrated and hyponatremic. Uh, and these patients typically have either short gut syndrome or they have uh, uh, an ileostomy with a high output uh, with poor replacement of the uh, electrolytes. Uh, again, that's a different issue uh, from what we are talking about uh, today. So, how does this problem come to our attention and uh, what exactly uh, the type of people get affected uh, by uh, this problem that's called primary hyperaldosteronism? You see, these patients have a high blood pressure that is uh, resistant to treatment and usually they require somewhere between two to four medications to control their uh, blood pressure. Uh, and that's, uh, particularly if they are below the age of 50, uh, that should raise the uh, question of uh, primary hyperaldosteronism. If you treat this patient with the diuretic that's called spironolactone, which is a... Uh, potassium sparing diuretic, they do usually have a better response to the spironal lactone than the usual medications such as the beta blockers and the uh, ACE inhibitors. Often what happens is that the patient have got this scenario with uh, uh, high blood pressure, difficult to control, and on their blood they have hypokalemia. They often, if they are hypokalemic, feel extremely weak and they have uh, muscle uh, cramps. Uh, and in such a scenario, you would uh, uh, suspect the uh, syndrome and then you send them for an investigation. These patients tend to be the median age at the time of the diagnosis, or the mean age rather, at the time of the diagnosis is 50 years, so they are uh, young people. And uh, if you take all people with high blood pressure, it has been estimated that uh, about 7% of them uh, will have uh, primary hyperaldosteronism. Now, the, bio the uh, statistics could be very well biased uh, because the percentage is uh, variable uh, among different series. Uh, but if you uh, put them together, it might be about 7% of all people with uh, hypertension. So we need to be vigilant in, in, in these uh, patients. 
uh, uh, in order to diagnose them early because the uh, response to the treatment, uh, the earlier, the uh, better. And uh, their treatment is usually uh, surgical uh, by removing the uh, adrenal gland that has got the secreting uh, adenoma. And it has been proven that if you do surgery versus uh, medical treatment for these patients, uh, they will have less uh, risk of stroke, uh, cardiomyopathy, arrhythmia, and left ventricular hypertrophy as a result of a better control of the uh, hypertension. So the surgery tend to be curative, and also you will see it's minimally invasive. We do it laparoscopically, very successful with a very low rate of complications. Now we need to make the diagnosis first. How do we make the diagnosis? Making the diagnosis is a uh, few things. One of them, we have to uh, do the biochemistry in the blood of the uh, hormones. The other one is uh, uh, a CT scan to see if there is a single adenoma. And the third one is localization of the adenoma if the CT scan does not show one, the CT dedicated. Uh, the adrenal dedicated CT scan. Now, once we see the patient, we will uh, first thing we do is that we uh, uh, check their uh, serum aldosterone, and you'll find that usually it's more than 15 nanogram per uh, deciliter. Uh, we measure the renin, and then we measure the uh, ratio between the aldosterone and the renin. Now, laboratory uh, references are variable, depend on the country, the country that you are working, uh, but that's not uh, an issue. You don't have to remember that off heart. Uh, but we rely heavily on these two things. So serum aldosterone running and the ratio between the two. And there is a set uh, a setup for the uh, ratio about uh, 90. If it's greater than 90, aldosterone over running, then that is usually diagnostic of uh, uh, primary hyperaldosteronism. We need to make sure in these patients before we measure their serum aldosterone and adrenaline is that to discontinue their high blood pressure medication. Uh, so they should uh, skip uh, uh, these medications for a few days. Uh, and this includes pyronolactone, beta blockers, diuretics, and angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, the ACE. So because this can affect the uh, reading, you need to uh, go systematically with the patient and ensure they don't take the uh, medication for uh, somewhere between uh, 48 to 72 hours prior to having the blood sample to check the results of the uh, hormones. And then if we have high ratio and high aldosterone, we presume that, yes, it is a primary hyperaldosteronism, and we start looking for a, a secreting uh, adenoma. Now, every now and then we find a challenge in patients where the results are equivocal. The aldosterone running ratio could be uh, equivocal in the face of a high uh, aldosterone, but the ratio is not high enough to diagnose primary hyperaldosteronism, and these patients can have uh, a, a saline loading test or other types of tests, such as giving them captopril uh, or uh, giving them oral uh, salt uh, load, which is oral sodium. But the easiest way is to, to admit them to the hospital, do the saline load test, two liters of uh, normal saline, or 9% of sodium chloride, over four hours, and then we measure their serum aldosterone after that. And it uh, has been shown that if you take the level of aldosterone, uh, the cutoff mark at two nano, uh, 10 nanogram per deciliter, that will confirm the diagnosis of primary hyperaldosteronism if we are in doubt as a result of the inadequate uh, or indeterminate uh, results of the uh, aldosterone and renin ratio. Now this is uh, going to be suspected in patients who are chronically hypovolemic. And as I said uh, earlier, they are either have got a high output uh, ileostomy or a, a short bowel syndrome where they become uh, deficient of uh, electrolytes uh, and also they get uh, uh, dehydrated. Which means that if we rehydrate them and uh, uh, raise the level of the uh, uh, sodium uh, chloride in the circulation, this uh, 
usually suppresses the uh, level of the aldosterone and it will tell us this is just an appropriate uh, secretion of aldosterone. Sorry for the uh, image overlapping, but uh, that's uh, an angiography for the uh, adrenal gland. Uh, so uh, the next thing that we will do, get a CT scan for them. And the rule is if we see a, an adenoma in one of the adrenal glands, seem to be more often on the left rather than the right, and I have no explanation to uh, that, then uh, we have to do this, uh, uh, if we have an adenoma which is bigger than one centimeter, then the diagnosis is confirmed and we usually proceed to surgery. Very often localization is not necessary. However, uh, uh, often you find that these uh, lesions are very small, around the five millimeters, and it's impossible to detect them on the uh, adrenal dedicated uh, CT scan. So we do uh, adrenal vein sampling. The adrenal vein sampling is done by an experienced interventional radiologist. So we need to take uh, uh, peripheral blood and we need to take sample of blood from each adrenal uh, vein on either side. The procedure is tricky, so you need an experienced person to be uh, able to, uh, to do that. And when we take the sample, these three samples, we will measure the aldosterone, the renin, and we also need to measure the cortisol level particularly in the adrenal veins. We don't need it in the peripheral circulation. And the reason we need that is to be absolutely certain that the blood that we have sampled or the vein that we have uh, sampled and the blood that we have taken is from the adrenal veins and not from elsewhere, such as the cava or the uh, renal vein, uh, particularly if the anatomy is uh, uh, tricky. And the rule is uh, the... Uh, Serum cortisol to aldosterone should be fourfold. That ratio is fourfold. Cortisol to aldo, uh, sorry, aldosterone to cortisol rather, uh, in any adrenal vein to uh, confirm that we uh, have got the right vein and we have cannulated the uh, vein. And then after that, we compare the uh, uh, levels of the aldosterone in these three uh, samples. And obviously, if we have secreting adenoma on the left side, the sample from the left adrenal gland will show extremely high level of aldosterone, and the, uh, you find the right one is uh, usually uh, suppressed and the levels are very low. So sampling is a very important uh, uh, step that we need to do. Uh, it's uh, decisive before we operate on the uh, patients when we cannot confidently identify a, an adenoma on the CT scan. As I mentioned earlier, surgery is very successful in these patients and it's usually done in a laparoscopic fashion uh, with very low uh, risk of uh, complications. Um, we do this um, uh, very often and it's probably one of the most common causes for adrenalectomy these days is uh, excising an adrenal gland for a uh, aldosterone secreting adenoma causing the, uh, the Cohen's syndrome with the hypertension and the hypokalemia. Very often these patients are young, you will see the results within 24 hours and the patient will be free of antihypertensive medications. Now, immediately after the operation, we withhold uh, all the medications for the high blood pressure except beta blockers. Beta blockers, like steroids, they need to be uh, tapered uh, gradually, otherwise there is a risk of uh, ischemic uh, heart attacks and uh, arrhythmias and other problems. Uh, so we have to taper the beta blockers if they are on beta blockers gradually. Any other medication, we uh, stop them immediately after surgery. If the operation is done for the uh, for the good risk patient who's uh, expected to uh, have good results, the cure rate is uh, somewhere between 80 and 95 percent, where the patient will have normal blood pressure and uh, they don't need any medications to uh, to take. Other patients might be treated uh, medically, and these patients uh, who might have risk factor for continuation of the elevated blood pressure after the operation. 
uh, are treated uh, medically. So we give them usually spironolactone uh, to help them uh, settle down, um, along with other medications such as beta blocker, or calcium channel blocker, or ACE inhibitors. Uh, and that's done in consultation with the endocrinologist. Older patients, and by older it's hard to uh, determine, uh, but um, to me personally, I think uh, uh, I would present at the age of uh, 60, uh, they have less success with the operation. Uh, so in these patients, we try to manage them uh, medically with no operation because they could still be hypertensive after the operation. The same thing goes with long-standing uh, hypertension. And long-standing is, again, difficult to identify. But if someone has been uh, on blood pressure medication for over a decade, uh, is a nice cutoff to uh, indicate that they may not have the best results, particularly if they are older than the age of 50. So we have to consider a variety of factors when we operate on them. Other group of patients is a group of patients who do not actually respond to spironolactone when you uh, treat them. And uh, the lack of response to spironolactone is a poor prognostic indicator. It means that they will not have a benefit from surgery and they better continue on uh, medical treatment. Also, if the patient has other multiple comorbidities uh, that prohibit uh, surgery and anesthesia, or they are not willing to have an operation, then they can be managed with uh, medical treatment, except that the risk for the complications of stroke, arrhythmias, left ventricular failure is higher than those who treat it successfully with uh, surgery. Also, people or patients who have strong family of uh, family history of hypertension that tend to be a poor prognostic indicator, they may not respond to the operation. So we need to consider these few factors uh, before we offer the patient an operation. Uh, but, it, but the operation itself for the, for the uh, suitable patient uh, below the age of uh, uh, 60, I would say, some people say below the age of 50, uh, with uh, uh, good response to spiral action and uh, a definite adenoma, they will have a uh, better outcome with uh, surgery than long-term medical treatment. Thank you very much for that. I um, appreciate that you've uh, seen uh, this uh, video and uh, uh, I will continue to uh, publish them. And I'm hoping the next one will be uh, about uh, pheochromocytoma and its management. And as I uh, said earlier, I kept everything at the basic level uh, without going too much into the uh, details, particularly the areas that are a bit controversial. Uh, we don't want that to uh, make you confused about the plan, about what we do in, in these situations. And I will see you in the next uh, video. Thank you very much for watching again.